Hello YouTube, it's the poet SP Howarth here. Um, it's the day before Remembrance Sunday, so before I get into any poetry or anything like that, I'd first like to take this opportunity to remind you to wear your poppy with pride. I'm down with the youth, so I've got one on a wristband, but uh, by all means pin one to your jacket, support our troops, and, uh, and remember those who gave a, a lot for us and gave their sacrifice for us. Um, uh, I'm not going to read any war poems actually. I've said in my last video that, uh, that I would be trying to get back to uploading my own poems. And um, today I'd like to read you a poem called Ode to Rain, which I wrote shortly after my 30th birthday after going for a, a long hike in the Purbeck Hills and being caught in a torrential rainstorm. I love the Purbeck Hills. Purbeck is actually my middle name, literally, and um, I, it's a part of the of the country I have tremendous affection for. But uh, I was really thinking about British identity as a whole and uh, and and that kind of thing when I wrote the poem. It reminded me actually of a of a beautiful line in the cult movie With Nail and I, when Uncle Monty says uh, the character of Uncle Monty he has this beautiful line: "We live in a kingdom of rains," and. Um, the poem sort of sort of dwells on that kind of relationship of the British to the land, to the weather. Anyway, I hope you find something to enjoy and admire about this poem. And um, here we go. On Nine Barrow Down, over Purbeck, the clouds have colluded in grey. The winds whip about in their squadrons and hassle the day. A wet woolen blanket of weather shrouds the sun like a moon on the wane, but just like the gorse and the heather, I welcome the rain. The ruins of Corf in the distance, the burial mounds up ahead, where pagans in dark bygone ages laid rest to their dead. For here the Celt fought with the Saxon, the Saxon then fought with the Dane, but all the blood spilt in those actions was cleansed by the rain. Now it's tartans of field and hedgerow, a patchwork of pasture and lee, and storms are the only marauders that raid from the sea. By time any king is defeated, but one monarch always shall reign. Through spells she has sown and secreted the casting of rain. From the temporal mists of our mythos, from our forest of family trees, we shall treasure with trademark nostalgia whatsoever we please. But since Boudicca wreaked her avenges, or Uther had lain with a grain before stones were hewn into henges, we answered to rain, and the grass, and the moss, and the lichen, the mushrooms, the toadstools, the mould, they all play some part in a process, their part of a fold. And the hares that march forth from their burrows, the pigeons out scrumping for grain, the fox that creeps sly in the shadows, are bound by the rain. And in some town, a test match is cancelled. Or the open air Shakespeare postponed, while the same mother's milk that sustains us is cursed and bemoaned. We daffodils, roses and thistles, we all share the same nectar and bane, and will take as our subconscious sigils three droplets of rain. The hop vine that gave us the ale, the yew tree that gave us the bow, these must stubbornly shoulder the downpour to thrive and to grow. And the landscape is whispering to me in this echoing, chanting refrain. Its tenor sends shivers right through me. And so does the rain. How vain have I been and how foolish. How seldom did I understand how everything blooming and breathing is linked to the land by a twisted and spiralling coil, by a feather-light silvery chain, by the blood in the veins of the soil, the riddle 
of rain. And I want to know all the land's secrets. To be wise, but to never be tame. To pluck any plant from its garden and to name it by name. My heart and the earth's beaten tandem for dead gods awakening again. And for poets and druids and madmen who welcome the rain.